Good day, students. Today we want to talk about electric charges. At the end of today's lesson, we will be able to explain production of charges, state the types of charges, also explain distribution of charges and storage of charges. Now, we want to start types of charges. There are two types of charges. Number one, positive charge, and number two, negative charge. Now we now take that now one by one. Positive charge. This positive charge are produced when number one glass rod is rubbed with silk and uh, number two when cellulose acetate strips is rubbed with silk. Then the negative charge or charges are produced when ebonite is rubbed with four and uh, also polyether is rubbed with four. Now I want to go on now. Production of charges. If a plastic pen is rubbed vigorously on the hair or on a coat and it is held near a very small piece of paper the paper will be attracted by the pen some substances are found to possess the ability to attract light objects once they are rubbed the light objects are where as well as the rubbed material are said to be charged or electrified with static electricity. Now, production of charges. Charges can be produced by number one, by friction, number two, by contacts number three by induction i want to consider them now one by one production of charge by friction electrostatic charges are produced by friction when number one the barrel of plastic biro is rubbed on a dry hair. Number two, plastic rubber is rubbed against the sleeves of shirt or blouse. Number three, ebonite rod is rubbed with four. Number four, a glass rod is rubbed with silk. What we know that is that the opposite charge are produced by friction. Then what are the fundamental law of static friction or static electricity? The law say that like charges repel each other while unlike charges attract each other. You can see the diagram. The negative and the positive charges, they attract one another or each other. Why positive, positive or negative, negative charges, they will repel each other. And how do we know which charge is on a body? For example, on ebonite, ebonite uh, rod, we produce what? 
negative charge on d4. Why the ebonite itself will have what negative a positive charge. Also, d4 will produce negative charge when rubbed with a polyta, and polyeta will produce what positive charge. Also, seek we have positive charge while glass rod when rubbed with it we produce a we have a negative charge also cellulose acetate we, we when, when when rubbed we seek the seek we, what we produce positive charge but the cellulose cell, cellulose acetate we acquire the negative charge now we want to move on now the second one is production of charges by contacts. And how do we do it? We can see the diagram. We can see a conductor, C and D, stand on an insulator. And we bring, the two of them are in contact. The two insulators are in contact. We now bring a positive charge near them and what do you see remember that c and d are conductor they are neutral they have the same charge of number of charges so when the positive charge is is, is brought near them c will the the negative charges on c will tend to move attract the positive charge why the d the positive charge will tend to move away we now separate the c and d conductor after that we now move away the positive charge when we move positive charge that you now what separate the two conductors and the charge on c will now be negative and the charge on D will now be positive. So as we have seen it, so the figure above shows two uncharged conductors C and D in contact on insulating stands. A positively charged gas rod is brought near to C. If D is then separated from from, from uh, C, why the rod is still near C and D? D can be shown to be positively charged while C is negatively charged. So C is charged by induction, but D receives the discharge from C by contact. When the glass rod is eventually removed, the negative charge spread on C while the positive charge spread on D. Can you see that? That is charged by contact. Then charges by induction. We now also have a conductor. The conductor from the diagram. The uncharged conductor can be permanently charged when an ebonite rod is placed near the end of C, as you see from the diagram, the first diagram of the conductor, if the ebonite rod is negatively charged, it will be it will make the side of the conductor close to the rod positively charged, as you see it in figure A. The other end D of the conductor become negatively charged. You can see it there from the diagram. While keeping the ebonite rod close to the conductor, the other end is touched with finger. And we call it what? Earthing. That is, we earth the conductor so that negatively charged electron can leak away to the earth through the human body, leaving only the positive charge on the 
conductor. Can you see that we have the positive charge? We neutralize the what? The when touch, we move into the what? To the earth. Why the whole thing now what? We will now have the negative charge. However, the process can be repeated with a glass rod if the conductor is to be negatively charged as in the diagram. So you can see after everything we have what? The first one produce what? Positive charge and the second one what? Produce what? Negative charge. If one negative charge, what do you do? You bring what? The, uh, the negative charge near the conductor. If you want positive charge, you bring what? The positive charge near the conductor. Now we're now coming to distribution of charges on conductors. Can you see the diagram? The investigation into the distribution of charges on a hollow conductor using a proof plate revealed that, number one, there is no charge inside a hollow conductor. Remember, take that one. The charge is only on the outside. Number three, charges are more concentrated at the sharp, curved, or pointed end. Can you see from the diagram? The charges are more on the pointed end. Number four, charges on spherical conductors are evenly distributed. Then how do we store charges? The electrophorus and capacitors are devised for storing charges. The electrophorus can be used for producing, transferring, and storing of charges. So this is the diagram of electrophorus. It consists of an ebonite base and a brass disc with an insulating uh, handle. Can you see? When you bring the, the disc near the ebonite, just like what we have discovered before, the ebonite is positive charge, then it will what it will attract the negative. While the uh, the positive charge on the able network will move away, so that before you know it, we have what a positive charge on the able net. and from there it can be transferred to and store in a place. So what we are, we are that's the end. But we want to see our classwork. Look at this question. Electrophorus and capacitor can store charges. True. A true. B false. C cannot say. D none of the above. As we have just learned, electrophorus and capacitor can store charge. The answer is A. Number two, when an ebonite rub, rod is rubbed with four, the four becomes what? Negatively charged. Yes. Ebonite rod in question two becomes what? Positively charged. Very good. Like charges, does what? It repel. Number five. Charges are unusually concentrated at places where the surface are unusually concentrated at where sharp, curved, pointed place. Yes. So that's the end. When we have the assignment, the assignment is state the fundamental law of electrostatic and number two what is electrostatic thank you very much and god bless you all